24 hour, seven day in week. And of course, if you don't have uh, internet access, you can borrow your license and use offline licensing. Okay, let's start with 3ds Max. You know, 3ds Max is a very powerful uh, platform. Uh, a lot of people use 3ds Max and V-Ray. Uh, because V-Ray gives them uh, speed, speed based on CPU or GPU, uh, accurate physically based GI, uh, accurate lighting, physical materials, and if you want to complete your workflow, you can use Phoenix FD in 3ds Max for simulation of fire, smoke, candle, uh, paint, explosions, ocean, for everything. Before I start with the final, with the last service pack, I want to to do a quick overview of a major steps in uh, version 3. And all this start with variance-based sampling. And this is a major, major change because uh, we removed the local subdivisions and that's made the control very, very easy. It's linear control. Uh, we, we have even noise in our image. We have predictable render times now and it's very good for compositing. The next step with 3.4, the major feature was a built-in denoiser, V-Ray denoiser. That means that you can render your image with lower quality and after this you can denoise your image. Now let's jump to the last service pack. And one of the major features here is interactive production rendering, aka IPR. That means that based on uh, progressive or rendering in buckets, it's very similar to RT. That means start at once, you can use interactive uh, without to, to stop your rendering and change everything. The next thing is adaptive lights, as upgrade of probabilistic lights. And this is um, this feature will speed up enormously your rendering process because the idea is to eliminate the, the light with less or none contribution of a pixel or a couple of pixels. And when we have a scene with a lot, a lot of light, uh, you see that your process, rendering process, will be speed up. Another very cool feature is resumable rendering. That means that, uh, for example, uh, with power loss or manually or a crash during the rendering, uh, the data is stored in the your image file and after this you can start your rendering not from the beginning but for the, from the last point. Precision per render element, that means that the most important render element like a Z depth point position will be uh, by default in 32 bits. Of course, uh, full support of MDL materials uh, by NVIDIA. This can help you with cross-platform exchange of materials. Another materials, all surface materials by Anders Langdon. It's an open source uh, material. You can use it. It's a uh, standard and universal material for everything, for SS or a hard service. 
And another thing is live VR rendering. That means that you can connect your HTC Vive or Oculus to your computer and using V-Ray to render and observe everything in your environment, 360 degrees, of course. A lot, a lot of GPU improvements with uh, less GPU memory usage, uh, new, f new support for aerial perspective effects, uh, and with this we have support for uh, atmosphere render element for compositing, various stochastic flake materials with support for um, blend material and additive molting blend material, shadow catcher for matte surfaces, uh, V-Ray HDR ground projection, and a lot, a lot of new stuff. Another cool thing in 3D in the next version is additional control in the VFB using RT. That means that uh, when you run your RT, you know that with right click you have uh, some control for zoom or pause. Now we can select in the View, uh, in the VFB, different objects, not only different objects, but materials. And you can set your focus point if you use depth of field effect. And now let's talk about SketchUp and Rhino. Vira and SketchUp and Rhino, they're quite similar. The core in all Vira products is the same. It's based on App SDK, uh, Vira App SDK. And if there's any difference uh, for functionality, this is only because restriction uh, from the platform that Vira is built for but you can use SketchUp and Rhino. I'll show you an overview based on workflows in SketchUp. It's exactly the same in Rhino. The user interface, now we call this experience design, and every simple and uh, every feature. The first thing that you notice in the SketchUp and Rhino is the new installer. And then let's see what we have. Now we have simplified, simplified, centralized window with everything that you need. Very cool feature is when you create light, you can in control the intensity in the viewport. Of course, we have an additional lapse shape. full support of GPU if you will, if you have a decent GPU of course. Very easy to control with quick settings based only on sliders for quality exposure. And of course if you are expert in rendering, you can use the advanced settings. Color correction on different level based on exposure, contrast level, curves, and white balance. Of course, uh, lens effects, there are post production effect. The new material editor with ray traced preview, that means that your material is exactly the same because in the preview it's, the swatch is rendered with V-Ray. You have quick settings, you have free library, 
with just drag and drop or exchange material from uh, generic material to metal or to emissive material to white material or the new car paint with flakes using RT it's very easy to adjust your settings based on sliders only and to achieve the better result of course now we have implemented fast SS material a lot a lot of uh, improvements in the speed in speed uh, rendering with proxy uh, in the core in the background with embris or with uh, bu bucket splitting after the the rendering not only with buckets you can use and progressive render the new variance based sampler will give you m better result in less time of course now now we have uh, supports for the native uh, section in SketchUp but now you can use Vray Clipper based on custom objects plane or box or whatever objects you set with very very cool features that means that you, when you cut your objects it's cut only in render time you, you don't cut the geometry itself another dynamic geometry we refer and this is very cool new feature called curl option curl, curl control and of course the viewer is rendered uh, only it's present only in render times if you want to to use V-Ray for VR experience you can use it for spherical panorama or uh, cube 6 by 1 image stereoscopic or not and in addition of everything we have new sky model that will bring you more natural uh, look of light of the from the sun and the sky with ground albedo color and blend angle from the uh, ground albedo and the sky you can set even the horizon high you can control this now aerial perspective effect it's very similar to environment fog but very very cheap for rendering uh, you can simulate with this effect um, haze or dust in the air now we have new type of lights called mesh lights that means that every geometry you have in your scene you can convert this geometry to emissive to a light it's is become a light. We have updated two-sided material with this option multiply by front. This will multiply the front and the back color for more natural and photorealistic result. New BRDF called GGX or GTR for metals. And something called rounded corners. This is an option. It's in a new map called edges. That means that if you want to have a detail in the in the edges, if, uh, you know, in the in the real world, there's no hard edges. 
and you can use this if you don't want to have hard edges you the first thing is the first method is to model this but it's insane now you can smooth your corners only in render times they're ray traced smoothed corners without modeling only in with one simple map and you can see the difference and of course the denoiser it's a built-in internal denoiser based on different render elements there are specific render elements uh, for normals uh, noise world position normal positions it's a render channel it's very easy to use this and this will give you the ability to render your image in lower quality and then to denoise your image after this uh, using hardware accelerator you can denoise your image uh, with the CPU or with the GPU it's very easy to use this because uh, the denoiser is built with presets and of course you can denoise the beauty pass the RGB image and the every individual render channel that mean in compositing you can compose your image and the composed denoiser image will be exactly the same as the denoise the denoised uh, RGB pass now I will switch to Rhino as I mentioned before SketchUp and Rhino they share uh, exactly the same interface the workflow is exactly the same every feature is the same with one very specific difference in Rhino we have uh, Grasshopper and now with the new version of Grasshopper we have uh, built-in integrated V-Ray components in the Grasshopper view you have a render components uh, to render all the, the flow itself you can um, you can change the materials you can assign materials internal you can set the camera and you can set lights and this is the workflow this is the flow of grasshopper the last one and this is the very components the first thing is that you can render only grasshopper flow without any surface from Rhino you can set your camera inside you can change your materials with reflection ref uh, refractions or uh, glossiness you can change the lighting and now if you want to render not only the grasshopper flow but everything in your scene you can use this node and assign different material that's present in your scene and please uh, check our new website you will find there a lot a lot of interesting stuff we have a magazine we have tutorials we have a gallery from our client so check this out and if you want to join the very community please connect with Dan and guys thank you thank you for for your time thank you for thank you thank you um, I'm gonna share the uh, the results from the the poll we did earlier and so I guess we can see that uh, we have pretty much a balanced uh, group of 3ds Revit and SketchUp users here in the GTA and uh, 
a few others uh, through Canada. Um, Yuvar from your or Monica from your experience, do you find this is pretty much the breakdown in your licensing on your end? Mm -hmm. Is this similar to what you guys see? Oh. Okay. I'm just going to clo close that. Okay, perfect. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming out to learn what's new in V-Ray for 3DS, SketchUp, and Rhino. Um, again, if you guys didn't take advantage of the V-Ray for Revit trial or purchase um, the 10% discount, you can head over to our e-store. Uh, if you need more information, um, my uh, contact uh, phone number and email, I should have put that there as well. And, of course, we have the uh, next version of the uh, V-Ray webinar series, Best Practice in Leveraging Multiple CPUs for Optimized Rendering. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.